So, the Disney Plus streaming service launched last week, and many people were very excited about the Star Wars original trilogy being available in 4K HDR, even Dolby Vision on compatible devices. But is it really HDR? Let's find out. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thiel. I am a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. Today, we are going to analyze the HDR presentation of the Star Wars original trilogy, namely Episode 4, A New Hope, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi on Disney+. We were as surprised as anyone else to find out that the original trilogy and the much-criticized prequels are available in 4K HDR, even Dolby Vision on DV-capable devices, without so much as a previous announcement or leak from Disney or other reputable sources. So we decided to check it out ourselves, and here, I want to thank my colleague Adam Fairclough, who's also known as Evil Boris Online. He normally does HDR game analysis on this YouTube channel. Adam developed an ingenious heat map system that tells us at a glance the peak brightness of different elements on screen. If you look at this HDR brightness adjustment screen from FIFA 20 processed through the heat map, you can see the box on the left changing colors as we increase or decrease the brightness. The box on the right remains constantly pink, which corresponds to the 700 nit peak brightness of the LG OLED TV on which we are running this heat map. As you can see from the luminous intensity scale shown at the bottom of the screen, 700 nits is pink, 400 nits is red, 300 nits is yellow, 200 nits is green, and 100 nits is cyan, or turquoise, or teal, or McLunky, whatever you want to call it. Let's start with the iconic confrontation between Luke and Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. The lightsabers and explosions never exceeded 400 nits. I'm having to make up some sound effects here because if we included the original soundtrack, this video would be flagged as violating copyright and then banned on YouTube. So, okay, enough of this. I'll let this scene play out in silence. Compare this with the battle between Rey and Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens on Disney+, and you can see that the lightsabers go up to 700 nits and beyond, delivering more HDR impact. Going back to another scene from The Empire Strikes Back, none of the elements on screen, ranging from the rear thruster on the Millennium Falcon, and the explosions, to the interior of the spacecraft, exhibited peak brightness above 400 nits. Contrast this with The Force Awakens where the explosions do reach 700 nits or even higher, giving us a more convincing sense of HDR, especially when set against the darkness of space. We have analyzed all three episodes of the original trilogy, A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. 
and didn't find a single instance where peak brightness went above 400 nits. So what's going on here? To our eyes, the HDR output of the Star Wars original trilogy on Disney Plus looked distinctly flat and lacking in HDR impact. Sure, there's an increase in brightness compared with SDR, but there's likely no increase in dynamic range that we can see. Our theory is that a global adjustment or conversion has been used to adjust a theatrical grade, bumping up overall brightness and tweaking the contrast to be comfortable for viewing in a home environment, which serves to avoid the common complaint of dim and washed out HDR content. However, even though the picture appears brighter, it lacks any real increase in dynamic range. It is still an improvement over what we've had on 1080p Blu-ray because you get 4K resolution, 10-bit video data, and DCI-P3 white color gamut. But in our opinion, it's misleading to call this HDR just because it has an HDR or Dolby Vision label, when the reality is that it's simply 10-bit SDR wrapped within an HDR10 or Dolby Vision container. It's easy to see the difference between the original trilogy and other newer shows on Disney Plus that have received a proper HDR grade, such as Episode 7, The Force Awakens, or movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The SDR to HDR conversion on the original trilogy was so simplistic, we think we could probably recreate it by just using in-TV picture settings on an SDR Blu-ray, and if there is enough demand from you guys, we will consider attempting it in a follow-up video. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. I would like to thank Adam or Evil Boris again for lending his expertise, and I will see you in the next video.